Okay, in this vodcast, we're going to talk about some of the basic terminologies and structures of the atom. So, from middle school, you should remember some things from middle school. One of the big things is um, all matter is composed of atoms. So, basically, if you had a bar of gold and you cut that down into its basic unit, you're going to come up with an atom. And an atom has three basic parts to it it's got positive protons negative electrons and neutral neutrons the protons and neutrons are in the center of the nucleus of the atom and the electrons circle the atom bear in mind this is not a accurate representation of the atom so we will get into that in a much later broadcast but just to kind of give you a visual of where they kind of lie out in space so for the electron we gave it the symbol E with a negative sign to simplify, uh, represent that it's an electron. Protons, P with a plus sign. Neutrons, N with a zero as a superscript. Um, atomic mass unit. Now this is kind of related to the mass of each particle. Um, they were able to calculate the mass of a proton, which happens to be about 1.673 times 10 to the negative 24. Very, very small number. Extremely small number. Neutron is not much different. It's off by a little bit, but it's relatively very similar. Whereas the electron is even smaller. Now, to make it easier to talk about masses at this subatomic particle, they stop using the mass in grams because it would, to keep talking about these numbers becomes too tiring. Some, so they made a whole new unit called the atomic mass unit. And the atomic mass unit is basically defining. Let me get the next slide. Basically, it defines the proton of a nucleus of a carbon atom to be 1. So whatever the mass of one proton in carbon, they call it 1 AMU. And so everything from there is just scaled from that 1 AMU. So since a proton is 1 AMU, they also define a neutron, going back to the previous slide, a neutron to be 1 AMU as well, since the masses are very similar. Electron is a some very small fraction, 1 divided by 1840, which we still consider pretty insignificant in terms of mass. So we define a new term, atomic mass unit, and this is where the definition comes from, the mass of one proton from carbon. Okay, atomic number. There is definitely some vocabulary and notations you have to be aware of. Atomic number, represented by the letter Z, it basically tells you the number of protons and the number of electrons in a neutral atom. So it's important to know number of protons and the number of electrons in a neutral atom. When an atom is not neutral, it's going to be different. So Z equals number of protons, also equals number of electrons. Mass number, represented by the letter A, is the sum of the protons plus the neutrons. So mass number equals number of protons plus the number of neutrons. This is a very, very important definition which people will get confused with another term. So remember, mass number equals protons plus neutrons. So if we look at the periodic table, you'll notice a couple things, and some of it's not exactly the same. They will list the atomic number, which is the number of protons, again, also the number of electrons in a neutral atom, chemical symbol, element name, but this number people get easily confused on. This is the atomic weight of an element. It is not the mass number. Mass number and atomic weight are related, but they're not the same. We'll get into more detail what atomic weight is, but just know that atomic weight, some people will say atomic mass, so if you see that's really the same thing. Atomic mass and mass number are not the same thing. All right, going on to our next slide. There is a notation that we do to write elements. So here's the basic notation. We'll have some sort of element symbol. The mass number will be written as a superscript, and the atomic number will be written as a subscript. And I'll show you some examples in a second. Another way of writing it is the element name dash the mass number. Both notations work. Um, because no matter what, if you change the number of protons, you change the element. So here is some um, atomic notations. 
and how we write them. So here, sodium has an atomic number of 11, so it's got 11 protons, which you can look on the periodic table, and it's got a mass number 23. So if it's got a mass number 23 and an atomic number of 11, how many neutrons does this have? Well, you just subtract the two. So 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, so this has got 12 neutrons in the center of its nucleus. You can always multiply, I'm um, sorry, subtract the mass number minus the atomic number to get your number of neutrons in an element. So these are just some examples that you can take a look at is how we write these notations. Some of the stuff they talk about in the news, uranium-238, this is what they use for nuclear weapons. Uranium-235, uranium-238. If you ever hear that in the news, now you know exactly what that means. Okay, next slide. Okay, isotopes. Isotopes are basically elements that have the same number of protons but different number or different mass numbers. Or said in another way, and really the easiest way to remember it is, atoms with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. So every element out there has what we call isotopes of each other. If you take a look at this example, we have carbon 12 and we have carbon-14. They're both the same element. The only difference is that they have, this carbon-12 has six neutrons, and this carbon here has eight neutrons. That's the big difference, and those are what we call isotopes of each other. In nature, most elements contain mixtures of isotopes, so So here's an example of just isotopes of potassium. So potassium-39, potassium-40, and potassium-41 all have the same number of protons, but they all have different number of neutrons. And again, the number of electrons are the same as long as the element is neutral. So these are all the isotopes of potassium. Okay, last slide, and it's just a kind of example. Here we want to fill this out, and it's basically we got a complete symbol just for some practice. So here we have silicon, which has a mass number of 29 and an atomic number of 14. The other way we write this is silicon dash 29. So that was the mass number and the name of the element. The atomic number of this is, well, it tells you in the bottom, 14. The mass number is, tells you in the top, 29. Okay, atomic number and number of protons will always be the same. Number of neutrons, we do have to do a little bit of subtraction. So 29 minus 14, that's going to be 15. And the number of electrons in a neutron atom will be the same as the atomic number, which would be 14. Here we have cobalt 58, and so we have to write the symbol cobalt. We write the mass number on top, 58, but now we gotta look up the atomic number. So we had to look up the atomic number, and that was happens to be 27 on the periodic table. Oops, come on, not writing here. Oops, 27. Okay, cobalt 58, the atomic number is 27, since we looked it up on the periodic table. Mass number is already given to me here, 58. Number of protons will be the same as the atomic number, 27. Number of neutrons, well, we got to do a little bit of math. 58 minus 27, that's going to be 31. So it's got 31 neutrons in the center. And the number of electrons will be the same as the atomic number in a neutral element, and that will be 27. Alright, so here's kind of an example of an introduction to some of the terminologies of the basic structure of an atom.